Hello, welcome to the Sigma DSP video training series. I'm David Thibodeau. I'm the uh, Sigma DSP support engineer for the Consumer Audio Group. And um, so we're going to start off right with the basics. What is a Sigma DSP? Well, when, what is a DSP for that matter if you're really new to this? Um, you know, DSP is just a, a digital signal processor is what it stands for. And all it is is, uh, is a special processor that's um, really good at multiplication and addition, uh, which is very well suited for audio uses. And so we designed the Sigma DSP to be very audio specific, very good at processing audio, at handling uh, coefficients and such. Uh, to make a very uh, very efficient, very low cost um, product, but it's more than just that. Sigma DSP is more of a, a system using Sigma Studio as a software, and then the Sigma DSP hardware. So, uh, with that in mind, let's begin and go to uh, a, a bit of a presentation. Uh, I won't have very many of these in uh, this video series, uh, but for this beginning, it's good to have. Um, a few a few quick slides here so uh, yes it's good to have a good idea of sort of the history of the products um, we first started um, you know the first generation of the Sigma DSP goes way back we still sell a few of these but it's these are very old parts at this point and that we, we pretty much called the Sigma core. Um, it really wasn't a, a number. I put 000, zero, zero here. Um, but then after that, we developed a Sigma 100 core, a Sigma 200 core, a Sigma 300, and a Sigma 350. This is what we're. I'm going to refer to a lot in talking about the processors, uh, aside from the part numbers themselves, but whether it's a Sigma 100 core, or a Sigma 200 core, or a Sigma 300 core. So the 100s, was obviously a step up from the from the original Sigma core, and it added it had um, uh, converters built in. There was a version with no converters, uh, but the most popular ones it's a 1701, and then uh, 1702 is a slightly slimmed down version, and the 1401 is an automotive version of the 1701. So these are all very similar, very much in the in the in the family. And uh, where we're going to, it's a good, great place to start. These are extremely popular parts. Um, the core runs at 50 megahertz, very low cost, reasonably low power. Um, and um, yeah, it was a great starting point for Sigma DSP. Then we made a jump and improved the core. We added some features inside the core that was a little bit different. Um, and we came out with sort of two branches of this one with just the DSP. And it ran at a much higher rate, 172 megahertz, the core. So it had a much more uh, audio processing power. And, uh, and it also introduced the built-in ASRCs, which is short for Asynchronous Sample Rate Converters, um, which is very handy in doing uh, systems where you have um, asynchronous clocks coming in. Uh, and you can uh, easily convert to... Um, to the uh, internal rates or other rates as needed. And then we came out with the 1761 series of parts, which is uh, 50 megahertz, just like the 1701. And they're meant to be lower power, smaller uh, for the portable market. So hence it had a, a little bit lower uh, core rate, but it had built in ADCs and DACs, two ADCs, two DACs, and there's some analog summing in the front end and the and the back end. So there's a lot of cool features, a headphone amp, etc. Um, there's a few things that um, that are that are a bit different from the 1701, but uh, but that's the point. The parts should be a bit different. Um, and then we made quite a leap in the core design to design the Sigma 300 core. Uh, these products, both the 300 and 350, they're just DSPs. There are no codecs built in. Uh, but the, DS, the, the DSP core, um, as I said, is a very, very large leap uh, in the design. It runs 
around 300 megahertz, just shy of 300 megahertz. So a lot more processing. Plus, the way it does the addition, it has a quad Mac core. So it can do many um, uh, filter taps at the same time, uh, which makes it a lot more efficient in processing. And then we added a lot of accelerators um, outside of the core to help do some of the math um, and uh, other functions. It has ASRCs built in. Uh, a lot of serial ports, so very flexible uh, clocking, um, and it can handle a lot of I/O in, to, in and out of the core. So it was it was quite a step up, and a lot more memory, so a lot more uh, room for delay and stuff like that. And then uh, several customers asked for even more memory for longer delay lines, and we made a few changes on some of the periphery around the core to make the Sigma 350 products. And um, so they still, the core is still exactly the same. It runs at the same rates. Um, and um, uh, the programs are interchangeable because the memory maps, the lower part of the memory maps were the same. Uh, and the extra memory was just put on top of it. So any uh, program from the Sigma 300 can be ported over directly. Uh, we did a couple different versions. We did one version of, of the Sigma 350 that is pin for pin compatible. It literally drop in. Um, and then the 1467 series um, has is an 88 pin. So we could take more advantage of a few more auxiliary ADCs and more GPIO uh, and other uh, features for the serial ports. So um, so it's quite a robust family. We have There's a lot of choices uh, you can have. Um, but what makes all these parts very useful is Sigma Studio. Sigma Studio is the computer program that allows you to, to program these parts without needing um, knowledge of DSP programming and of assembly programming, etc. It's, it's pre-used blocks, drop, drag and drop, and... Uh, and connect them up so an audio engineer will be very familiar with how uh, to run a signal flow, et cetera. Um, I mean, there's in places there's still some you know, knowledge needed of what's going on under the hood to uh, to really become a power user, I guess you could say. But for the most part, it's a very simple interface and uh, and very good to use. Um, what else to say here? I'm pretty much. Um, hit all these bullet points and what this does as it says the last bullet point it enables shorter development time it makes it very fast to develop a program uh and you know in a uh, in a very short amount of time you can have your application pretty much up and running and then just have um uh fine tuning to do uh so so it's a it's a really awesome tool um and um and what else? I guess um, no more ands. What more to say? Go on to the next slide. <laughs> okay. Uh, how it Sigma Studio works, it has two very basic jobs, and then there's a third job of, of um, uh, which I'll mention, these modes. So it shows three different modes here. So the, the very first job it has is to use the GUI to program. So you you drop in what you want, you make the connections, you make the settings, you you um, create your signal flow. You also have the ability to go into the hardware and set up the registers of the of the part. There's a register window, so it allows you to do all those setups all in the GUI, um, uh, very straightforward and easy to understand. And then, so this is the, the, the basic design mode. That you're you're designing the, the the software, and then you uh, you link compile download, and that program that you've compiled will be downloaded to the DSP, and will run in the DSP. It does not run in Sigma Studio on the host PC. It only runs on the Sigma DSP, and then at that point you're in what is called here's the tuning mode. Um, but this is where you have the real-time control of the parameters. So you, in the Sigma Studio GUI, you can adjust volume controls, you can change EQs, you can mutes, etc. You know, 
uh, whole slew of things you can do um, to to tune uh, the audio and the signal flow the way you like it. And this is all being done um, in the DSP. So the Sigma Studio is just behaving like a controller, just like a system controller would, and is sending commands to the object in the DSP to make the volume control changes or make the changes in the EQ. So it's that's the runtime mode. And it's, and it's essentially emulating what a microcontroller can do. So anything you can do in Sigma Studio in the runtime mode, you can do with a controller, system controller on your system board. So uh, it's, it's, uh, it's very handy for that use. Um, you're able to watch and see what communications is going on between Sigma Studio and the DSP. Um, so it's very uh, a very useful tool, very useful for troubleshooting as well. Uh, if you're if something's not quite working in your interface, it's it's very very powerful tool. And then the third mode is really if if you have a system controller, then you can export the the control files and import that the headers and C code into your. Uh, uh, into your controller software and have it program the DSP and control the DSP. Um, and, and most of our Sigma DSPs have the ability to self-boot off of an EEPROM. So you don't have to have a controller in most of these applications. You can have the DSP boot up itself and just run. Um, however, you still have the ability to still talk to the part and communicate to the DSP, even if you self-boot. So it's a very powerful platform. We have many customers who, who have a system controller but allow the DSP to boot itself up, and then the system controller just sends the control commands for volume and switch changes and mutes and whatever is needed. Um, and it simplifies the controller code, but then there's a lot of other customers who have the controller download the code and fully control the DSP. And there's advantages to to both of these um, approaches. So uh, so that's the, the, the basic power of this. It's not just the Sigma DSP, which is very powerful in the hardware and very good for audio, but it's this, the, the synergy between the DSP and Sigma Studio that really gives you a, a very... Um, uh, powerful platform for developing your applications very quickly. Um, a very, very quick overview of Sigma Studio. Um, this is gives you the idea of what, what's available. You have the basic um, uh, uh, center portion where you're going to drag objects out of the toolboxes into your schematic. So there's, there's a couple different toolbox views. They're the same tools, but a couple different ways to, to do it. Um, and uh, so the, this is your library of functions that you can drag in. And there are many specific functions, and there's many more generic functions that you could put together to do what you need to do. Um, so it's very customizable, very flexible and powerful tool. Um, and then uh, for the more advanced, like the Sigma 300 and 200 cores, um, there is uh, this compiler output file, which helps you see the usage of the blocks and the, how many MIPS you're using. The original Sigma 100 cores, however, cannot take advantage of that feature. Uh, you have to look at a file to see how many MIPS you're using. Um, so then the other powerful features is down here, there's the capture window, which allows you to view in when you're in the runtime mode, uh, you can view what the objects on the screen are sending to the DSP and see what registers it's writing to, what um, what object addresses it is in memory, and what the, the values it's sending. Uh, there's also a uh, parameter tab, which you can look at the actual parameters. So very powerful screen. And then there's another even more powerful uh, thing we call the sequencer, which we'll go into much later, into much later videos. Um, but this is basically you can use this to create little macro files and download it to the DSP to test um, various things or read memory or, or uh, uh, whatever you kind of want to do. I've, I've made a lot of use of the, the sequencer. It's very handy. And you can capture 
these uh, the sequencer files can be exported in other formats. Its basic format is XML. Um, things on the capture window, you can capture in text. You can capture it in uh, as a binary files, etc. So there's there's a lot of uh, a lot of flexibility. So that's the basic overview of uh, of Sigma DSP and Sigma Studio. Um, Please uh, continue to look at the other videos. Um, we're going to start uh, with some simple tutorials and then uh, move into talking uh, about more involved applications and uh, the toolbox and such. So this is uh, the first of the series. I hope you enjoy them. Uh, if you want to reach me, you can reach me at the uh, Sigma DSP and analog.com. That'll come to me. And uh, obviously, on the website, we have more information about the parts. And you can download Sigma Studio, which is a free download, by the way. So um, enjoy and uh, look forward to seeing you on the, uh, the, the, the uh, application videos coming up.